Hi guys and welcome back to Seduced by Novellas. I'm Leanne and today I'm, today I'm going to be wrapping up books 24 to 29. So let's get started. The 24th book I read is, is Uprooted by Naomi Novik and this is published by Delray Books. Um, this one I was given um, by Shauna from Tumblr and I think she has a booktube channel as well but I will leave her links down below. Um, I won this in a giveaway and I'm really 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 glad that she um, included this in the box. This is one of her favourite books um, because I read an excerpt um, and I thought meh it's alright it's okay and then obviously I got this and thought well might as well read it and it blew me away I mean I can't believe I almost missed out on this. So the story is about Agnieszka. She lives in a village at the edge of a wood, a very dark and creepy and terrible wood, and nearby is a tower where um, a sorcerer slash magician slash hero lives, and he's called the dragon. And every ten years, I think it is, he comes down and he takes one of the girls um, from the village to be his sort of lackey, basically. And Agnieszka thinks she's never going to get taken. She thinks that her friend Kasia will be taken because she's beautiful and she knows how to cook and clean. And basically she is the perfect um, girl to be chosen. But instead the dragon picks her. And it basically um, follows Agnieszka and the dragon as they take on the wood, essentially. And this, it was just so beautifully written and I loved the um, the magic system it was all to do with words and how you said words and the inflections which is the same thing Leanne but you know carry on um, and the female friendship between Agnieszka and Kasia I I was like please give me more of that I, I don't care about the, the tiny romance between Agnieszka and the dragon I want the, the female the female friendship and to be honest I shipped Agnieszka and Kasia more than her and the dragon because it was just beautiful um and yeah the the evil which was the wood and that oh yeah the twist at the end i i didn't see it coming and oh guys i just keep moaning about this book and rubbing my face against it obviously it's that good but um in the end i give this five out of five stars and just I was so shocked by this book. I know that there's a lot of division where people love it or they think it's really shit, but to be honest, just give it a shot and see which side of the path you fall on because to be honest, it's awesome and oh, uh, yes. The 25th book I read was The Raven King by Maggie Stevata. Um I can't remember what it's published by, but I'll leave a link down below or I'll put a um, and this is the fourth and final book in the Raven Cycle tri 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 Trilogy. And this is the fourth book in the Raven Cycle series, or quartet, I think it's been referred to as. And I was really looking forward to this because after the events of Blue Lily Lily Blue, where there was sort of a cliffhanger, I really needed to get onto the next book. But I don't know. I was kind of disappointed in this. Um, I don't, oh. I don't know, I was kind of disappointed in this. It wasn't, it didn't live up to expectations and um, it's been oh, a month, maybe more since I've read this so I've obviously had more time to think about it now but um, there was, I mean, oh, Henry Chang. I loved the inclusion of Henry Chang and the fact that he gets more uh, page time. He was, I just loved him. I loved him so much and I'm so glad that they sort of, you know, took him into the fold. But there were a lot of racist comments from Adam and Ronan that weren't actually addressed. So, and then there was a point at which um, Henry said, no, Blue asked him why he took the piss out of himself, basically. And, she, and he said, um, so that nobody else could or bef he beat people to the punch basically um so I was just that was a bit and that wasn't I don't know every time I read Henry Chang and things like that happened I just felt deeply uncomfortable and I spoke to other people afterwards about it and you know they felt the same so that was one thing that I was a bit iffy, iffy about uh as for it being a good conclusion to the series mm, Yes and no. I mean, 
everything got resolved but I feel like it got resolved too quickly and at the end it was nice at the end because everybody sort of got their happy endings but one of the characters um, just seems to disappear literally um, without any real explanation and I was really confused as to why that happened so I don't know, I'm still very divided about this. I think I'm gonna have to reread the whole series and just, you know, process everything and, and see how I feel. And, you know, maybe marathoning it will help me, you know, iron out any of those uh, creases. But I gave The Raven King four out of five stars. So the 26th book I read was Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. This is a, um, I was gonna say, self-fiction? Self-fiction? I don't even know what self-fiction is. Um, this is a non-fiction book um, talking about uh, mental health, basically uh, depression and anxiety. This is published by Canongate um, and this book, this book, it basically chronicles um, Matt Haig's uh, journey with anxiety and depression and I just... I love this book so so much and at that at that point in time when I was reading it I really really needed it because I felt really alone and my mental health was wasn't particularly spot on and I think everyone who knows someone with mental illness or who has men a mental illness they should read this book because it's just so helpful I mean there's a section called boys don't cry and um, there's a section that says, there's a section that says things depression says to you, um, and he talks about his symptoms, uh, and things that have happened to me that have generated more sympathy than depression, and how to be there for someone with depression or anxiety, and he just covers so much in such a short little book, and he doesn't impose his, uh, opinions on you, he says, okay, this worked for me, I didn't like medication but it might work for you so try that so you know it's not like you have to do this if you have depression or anxiety or both it's a well you know here's a little guide if you if you feel like you're alone then you can pick this up and it'll just you know boost you up because it just oh I do this a lot I just I, I moan and press the book against my face because I have so many words and so many feelings that it's just so hard but I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars and I recommended it to quite a few people actually. I recommend it to um, one of my friends, Hayley, and she devoured it and absolutely loved it. So I'm just, yeah, I'm happy to spread the love with this and definitely, definitely pick this up. Hopefully I'll have a more in-depth discussion on Matt Higgs' book and mental health in general. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be able to get that up, but I really, really do want to talk about it because I think it's extremely important. And um, Mental Health Week was in May, I think, and I wanted to do a video for that and I didn't actually uh, make one in the end. So, yeah, I, I want to do that. So hopefully that will be up at some point this year, maybe even next year. Who knows? The 27th book I read is The Neverending Story by Michael End. It, this is published by Puffin. Um, yeah, this is a story about Bastian Balthazar Bucks, and he's a small ten-year-old boy who gets bullied often and is having a bit, bit of a crappy life because his dad doesn't take any notice of him. And so he goes into a bookstore and ends up picking, well, stealing one of the books, and that is the never-ending story. And he goes to his um, school loft and just starts reading the story, and inevitably he is pulled, actually pulled into the story. Um... So this one is a hard one for me because I wanted to love it. I um, watched the film as a child and absolutely adored it. So when I found out this was a book, I was just like, yes, I need it in my life. But yeah, it left me feeling pretty disappointed. But I will be doing a 60 second review of this. So I will talk more or less about it in that. I gave this two out of five stars and I unhauled it, which you'll know if you saw my recent unhaul. The next book I read was The Tattooed Heart um, by Michael Grant. This is published by Electric Monkey. Ah! What the hell was that? Uh, and this is the second book in the Messenger of Fear series. I feel like 
I want to say, but to be honest, after I read this, I thought it would be a perfect duology. We'll see how it goes, though. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be picking up the third book or however many books there are because I felt like this was the perfect ending. Um, so anyway, the story is about a girl called Mara, and in the first book we um, find that she's in this strange world. She meets this imposing figure called the Messenger of Fear, and he takes her on this journey into someone's life, and this person has committed suicide, so they're basically finding out what the root causes are of her committing suicide. And I won't say anything else because otherwise it will spoil the rest of the first book and, you know, it's nice to go in uh, without knowing anything, especially with that because it was just like, oh my god, I, I didn't even, well actually no, I think I did um, twig it, which is very weird for me because I normally don't. Um, so this one was a continuation of the series and um, a continuation of Mara's journey uh, in this strange new world, essentially the afterlife I guess. Um, and yeah, it was good. There were some new in characters introduced, there were some old characters that were fleshed out a bit more, and you know, Michael Grant has got that way of writing that is so, so creepy. I mean, how, how can he still be writing, you know, how can he still be writing YA stuff when he writes such just horrible things? I mean, there is, um, a lot of sort of torture scenes, um, very graphically violent scenes that are just so, I don't want to say beautifully described, but just so brilliantly described. And you know, that, oh, it blows me away, it blows me away man. And I, I met him last year or the year before and he's just such, such an interesting person and just so world wise and he's not an asshole, he doesn't talk down to you. Um, especially since his audience is a YA audience. Um, I just, yeah, he's just, just fantastic. Oh my god. Stop. Stop, Wind. Please. I mean, oh, this cover though. These covers are absolutely beautiful and the, and the red pages. So for me, the ending, just like I said, it was a perfect ending. I feel like it completely summed everything up and I don't think I'm going to be reading the next books. Just because I don't think it's as strong as his Gone series. I devoured the Gone series and I thought it was amazing. Um, so, yeah, I just... This wasn't as strong. And I'm kind of nervous because I have Berserk by him as well. And I'm thinking, will I like it? Or is it going to be for me? I love Michael Grant as a person. I love his Gone series. And that's about it. But anyway, I gave the 3.75 out of 5 stars. And the last and 29th book that I read was Bravest Warriors, uh, Volume 2. This is created by Pendleton Ward, who also did the Adventure Time um, series. And this is published by Kaboom. Um, this is written by Joey Como, illustrated by Mike Holmes. The colours are by Lisa Moore. Uh, the letters are by Steve Wands. And the cover is by Tyson Hess, which is a pretty fantastic cover. So this series is about Danny, Chris, Beth and Wallow and they have taken over from their parents um, who were called the Courageous Battlers and basically they, you know, helped everybody out in the universe, I guess. And their parents are missing, they've been in the see-through zone for I don't know how many years, it's never explained. Um, and so they've taken over and they're now the Bravest Warriors. And in this one they go to a miss teen multiverse pageant um, and the brains of the contestants are going missing so obviously you know you've got to find out about that but um, I just thought this was a really really fun read um, as you may know I constantly speak about the uh, Bravest Warriors uh, YouTube series and I'm just waiting for season three to come I, they keep saying yeah yeah it's coming it's coming this fall mm, it's coming next next spring this summer next next summer it's coming guys, we, we're working on it really hard and I know, you know, they're doing it on YouTube and it's taking a long time but I'm just like so impatient. So in the meantime, obviously I'm picking up the comics because I love this series so much but it was just such, it was just such a fun, fun read and I love the art style. Um, I love the characters, they're all so funny and it's just, it's got that sense of humour that is right up my alley. So um, yeah, I mean if you like Adventure Time or if you like um, comedy that sort of slight it 
lean towards the slightly crude but because they make it sort of kid friendly it's not crude if that makes sense um i mean what can i say man what can i say look at beth with her bazooka and her name's beth tazooka so that that's just even better oh so um in the end i gave this four out of five stars okay guys that was my wrap up for books 24 through to 29 yep i got it right this time um let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of these or if you're interested in reading any of these. Um, what have you read recently? I'd love to know. Um, and until next time, uh, yeah, have a great day and, and stuff. I'm so awkward with this sign off. Like, uh, just, I kind of, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's just, you know, it's just really hard. Comment down below, you know, for my sign off thing. Let me know what she'd say. Uh, uh, have a great day, guys. I hope you guys are staying safe. And um, I love you all, like, as long as you're not an asshole. Okay? But, um, bye, guys. I'm gonna go through all my teeth now. How does he do it? How does he do it?